I'm going to assess the barrels and pistons. This is my T140V imported bike as a, as a barn find. On the clocks it says 342 miles. In reality it has done a few more miles than that. But I think the engine may have had a bit of a refresh to it. So I've had a, a bit of a problem in that I can't get the cylinder head off the barrels. So I've removed the whole lot, barrels and cylinder head together. What I intend to do is take the pistons off, give them a clean. Quite excited about that because I want to see whether they're standard or whether they're overboard. I've resisted the uh, temptation to wipe all the carbon off. Then I'm going to measure them and I'm going to measure the bores because I think they probably were put into these barrels fairly freshly before this bike was laid up. And that'll feed into the decision making I make about the barrels and the head. Because obviously, if the barrels are worn out and the pistons need replacing, it's a different kettle of fish than if uh, they're actually in quite good nick and I don't want to be damaging them in any way. So, we'll see. It fell out. <laughs> Normally sir clips are very easy to get out of pistons. I seem to make that a bit of hard work. One I've uh, had to bend to get out. One I can't get out at the moment. One came out okay and the other one came out so easy it pinged across the room. Which is unusual. Normally you just prise them up, out they come. I'm going to heat the pistons now and hopefully push the put, uh, good jim pins out. I have got a tool that clamps round and I'll push them through. I'm hoping I don't have to use that, but if I do, I do. A little bit of WD-40 inside just to cool down the good jump in. Easy enough.
So they were easy enough to get out in the end. I'll have to have another look at that sir clip, but now I want to let them cool down a bit because they are mad hot and they'll get them cleaned. I'm dying to see if these are standard or not. Uh, so I think I'll just have a quick wipe. Show you how hot that is. this point I can't actually see anything on the top. Just a brief look at them though there's a bit more carbon than if they were not run that much and it does look like the rings on certainly on that one seem to be uh, seized into the uh, lands. Now when I say seized it's probably uh, not really seized but uh, we might find out. I'm gonna dip them this side down and leave them in some uh, acetone for a little while to clean them off. Now while they're having a bath I'm going to measure the barrels. I've gone out of my way not to find out what the sizes should be so that I can measure them and then look at the standard. That way I get no target fixation of thinking they must be this size, they must be that size. I'll work these plugs out again as well before I turn it upside down. Luckily I've already given the balls a bit of a clean, so I don't need to worry about that too much. If you want detail on measuring the bore and measuring the pistons, I have done a previous video which I'll put in the description showing you how to use this equipment. I'll just give you the broad brush here. Before measuring anything, you do need to make sure it's clean. So although I've had acetone removed, I am going to give them a bit of a scrub on with some brake cleaner. I've done my best here to show you what I can see. There aren't any marks, there's definitely uh, cross hatching all the way down. I can see a little bit of staining. There's a mark on this side that you probably can't see that I don't think is too much of a worry. Looking at the other one, I think that's pretty similar. So they don't look in bad condition. I've given my wipe out with brake uh, cleaner. So now I'm gonna get the uh, bore gauge set up and we'll have a quick look. To use this, what you actually do is this bit fits into the top. And here you need to change, they call these anvils, so that the width of that, including that bit that you can see goes in and out, so the width of that will fit into the actual bore. So I need to work out which anvil to use first. So having chosen this anvil, the way this works is it's got to have the springy bit and the anvil so that you can actually measure inside. It's got to be the right size. So I'll set up the DTI on the top now. The DTI goes in and as you can see it moves the little one and the big hand. The first thing to do is choose a micrometer that's the right range for this. So let me just see which one it is. My intention here 
is to actually set this to 76. So it's got a half mil and then that takes it to 76. And I'll just lock it there so this won't turn. Now I'm doing the bores. The next thing is to set this so that the zero on here is when this is on 76 and the way you do this when you're fiddling about is you keep moving it around and it's the maximum deflection that gives it the zero right I'll get that sorted it can be confusing because the way the scale works is the opposite of what you actually think so let me just explain this is set at 76 so when that's at 76 at zero that would be exactly 76. If this gets narrower, you've actually got to take that away from 76 to get the measurement. So let's just see what this bore is at this point. So that would be 76, but it's not level. You look for the maximum deflection. And actually, the maximum deflection is one two three four so it's actually 0.15 of a mil narrower than 76 which is set up let me try this one this one in the same sort of place is actually 0.17 of a mil narrower so that way you take off this way you would add to the base which was 76. What I'll do now is I'll take three measurements in this axis on this bore, one here, one in the middle, one near uh, the combustion chamber. Then I'll take them this way, then I'll do this the same. So all together I have six measurements for this one, six measurements for that. I'll be able to tell from that whether the bores are straight, tapered, worn or oval so i'll get on i'll get those measurements and i'll discuss what i've found that's the left cylinder that's the right cylinder that's across the thrust faces and that's across the side to side so to speak now interestingly the left cylinder it would appear is slightly narrower at the top than the rest of it. Now that might be a vagary of my measurement but it definitely I felt looked different and I will go and check that again. So that's on the thrust faces and this is on the other face. So and that is apart from that one that's 0.01 of a mil different that looks pretty uh, accurate you know pretty even. The right hand cylinder I got the same measurements on the thrust faces and on the other so it does look like these have been worked on and they are in reasonable condition I'll re-measure these to see if it was just me with uh, starting off on that side now I don't know yet because I don't know what this is compared to spec but the more important thing is what is that compared to the size of pistons that were in there because obviously the pistons have to be the right size to match it doesn't really matter if these are within or without spec if they're not actually worn it does matter that they actually fit the pistons and as the pistons might come from another manufacturer than triumph originally used there may be a difference so next i need to measure the pistons i haven't finished cleaning them but i can measure these anyway um, they're still having a good soak all of the acetone evaporated actually so i've put in white spirits now um, but to measure pistons it should be on the skirt down here not near to where the um, rings are the reason being is the piston should actually be tapered slightly outwards at the bottom because the top gets hot or hotter there's differential expansion so the actual clearance you want to look for is across that part and about a centimetre and a half up now different 
piston manufacturers might give you different specs but that in general is the main way that uh, pistons are measured and that measurement is what you compare to your bore to see how much clearance you've got. I'll make sure the bits that I'm going to measure are clean even if I don't clean the rest of them yet. To measure these you take the lock back off because you want this to come back out and you obviously got to make it big enough. Now this is fiddly and you do have to try a few times but uh, basically you use the micrometer like that. You find the right place, get it as square as you can unless it's round it does make it a bit awkward and hear that click that says when it's fully on. Now what I'll do is I'll fiddle about with that for a while to see where I get what I think is the right measurement because any kind of angle will cause a problem. So let's see what I've got. It's a real fiddle measuring the pistons and it's very easy to have a slightly wrong angle and you've really got to look for the minimum that you can find on you know, moving it about quite a bit. Eventually came to piston A was 75.76 and piston B was 75.74. Now I make that about 0.09, so it's nearly 0.1, 0.09 of a millimeter for both of them. That equates to about three and a half thou, which I think is a measurement that's frequently aimed at with these although you'll see a lot of uh, internet information that say it perhaps should be a bit bigger but I think what I'm gonna think is these look like they've been bored for these pistons whether the clearance is a hundred percent right or not I think it's what they originally aimed for so I think these barrels and pistons are good to go it does look like the pistons and barrels were bored not that long ago although there's a lot of carbon on the top of the pistons i think that might have been poor running so if the barrels and the pistons were not stuck to the head i'd be very happy to use them uh, and probably will if i get them off eventually uh, i think i'm going to stop there because i think the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to have the uh, timing chest cover off and the primary and have a look inside there see what that looks like um, also I need to get on with the frame don't I, the sun's come out and it's reminding me I should be giving it a wash and uh, getting it stripped off ready for painting before the rain comes again. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope you found this interesting, I know it's not uh, been the longest one and we found out some interesting stuff, why not subscribe, see what happens next. <laughs>